name is Oliver Wohl from the Old Dominion University in Virginia, USA, and I'm part of the research team of the Kathleen Arctic Survey to study the ecological impacts of phytoplanktons to high CO2 values in the seawater. The algae are actually the forests of the ocean. Um, similar to a tree, they need light, nutrients and carbon to grow. As soon as the nutrients depleted in the water, the algae keep going to assimilate carbon which creates an overflow of carbon in their cell and they start to excrete this excessive carbon as carbohydrates. As soon as the carbohydrates are in the water, they will start to form um, sticky polymer particles which we call marine glue. The conditions here in the high arctic at 78 degrees north are very harsh. The cold is biting in your face and sleeping is most challenging with temperature below minus 40 degrees celsius. The reason why we are here at this time of the season where it's extremely cold here is that the algae start to grow at this time of the year and we want to see how this algae um, react on higher CO2 values we will adjust into the seawater samples. The initial idea was to um, incubate algae in um, bottles uh, placed in an ice hole. Uh, unfortunately, the temperature is so cold here that the ice hole will actually freeze up um, within a very short time and it would be very challenging to retrieve those bottles every two days. So we decided um, to change our plans a little and to grow those algae here in our little garden where we have the um, incubation bottles in containers exposed to similar light condition as we would expect under the ice. So here you see my garden where I have my incubation bottles stored in ice water to keep the temperature similar to those under the Arctic ice. And from those incubation bottles I will take subsamples every two days and these samples will be analyzed on different carbon parameters and the marine glue. In those bottles the algae will grow and half of those bottles we have adjusted the CO2 levels to those forecasted for the end of the century. I tried to confirm the idea that the algae in the bottles with higher CO2 values will produce more carbohydrates and consequently more marine glue which would then trigger the formation of marine snow. Overall our research will provide new insight in the fate of atmospheric carbon dioxide in the ocean and those insights will be used by climate modelers to forecast the trend of future carbon dioxide concentration in our atmosphere.